Okay, so I've talked briefly about the general properties of ceramics and in the next few slides I'll talk about ceramics that are used in the medical device manufacturing industry and their individual properties. Um, so where are they used uh, in medical devices. Big application is in dentistry. Uh, because of their high compressive strength, they're inert in body fluid. So as I said, they, they have good corrosion resistance. Um, they are non-ductile. They don't deform over time. And they have a good aesthetic appearance. Uh, so uh, over here, we have a picture of a ceramic implant next to a kind of traditional titanium um, post. They're used for blood interfacing materials, so carbon coated uh, heart valves, which we have here. Um, blood doesn't stick to carbon coated heart valves, um, which makes it uh, very advantageous for, um, for not having blood clots. They have a very high specific strength, uh, easy to fabricate and resistant to local thrombogenicity. Um, and another application is in inert orthopedics. So the types that are used in orthopedic implants are hydroxyapatite, uh, which I have a picture of here. So you can see it looks spongy like bone. Uh, alumina, very, very hard. Ruby, and they are osteoconductive, which means they um, can conduct, of the, they conduct the growth of bone um, during bone regeneration. So they're very good for bone grafting materials. So aluminium oxides or alumina are used in hip implants, dental implants, uh, cochlear replacements, so inner ear replacements. Uh, for cochlear, for a number of reasons, uh, light, as I said, uh, strong, good insulator, inert. Uh, dental implants, same reasons, and hip implants uh, for the hardness. Uh, zirconia also used in hip implants. Um, so sometimes the femoral head it would be zirconia or alumina uh, because it's very hard and very wear resistant. Calcium phosphates then, uh, these are used in bone graft substitutes. They're used for surface coatings on total hip replacements and they're used for scaffolds in tissue engineering. Um, so they invite bone formation, they uh, allow uh, the osteoblast cells to start um, regenerating bone tissue, which is why they're very good for bone graft. Calcium sulfates as well are also used for bone graft. Uh, carbon, hard valve coatings, orthopedic implants, as we talked about, and glasses. There are a range of glasses that are used for bone graft substitutes and fillers for dental materials. Um, so we, there are some biodegradable or resorbable ceramics. Um, they're all variations of calcium phosphate except for coralline and uh, plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris is calcium sulfate dihydrate and coralline is uh, what we take out of the sea. So plaster of Paris has been used as a bone substitute since the 1800s. Um, it is resorbable so it degrades in the host. Um, and examples, other examples are aluminium calcium phosphate, coralline, hydroxyapatite and tricalcium phosphate, all variations of uh, biodegradable ceramics. Uh, so coralline, as I said, it, it's, it's of coral. It's made by marine invertebrates. Um, it's got a limestone exostructure or skeleton. Uh, it's very porous and the, the pores are very unique to each species of coral but it's an excellent structure for bone ingrowth. Um, it's comprised mainly of calcium carbonate, which is resorbed in the body. Um, so the corals, um, when they're taken from the seabed, they can be converted to hydroxyapatite by a hydrothermal exchange process. Um, and then this resulting um, bone graft is used to treat defects or disease bone. And there are two uh, products, or uh, there are many products on the market I've, I've highlighted too. So BioCoral and Interpore 200 are um, products that are derived from coral for bone grafting. Okay, so that was a, just a, a whistle through of the different ceramics that are used in medical devices. It's not exhaustive, but it does comprise the, the main uh, ceramic materials used in medical devices. Thank you.